This is video three of the mini project to get Flame Audio working. Flame Audio is a separate package. Refer to the previous videos to start and stop the music as well as change the track. We're going to create a basic text menu in this tutorial using the text components. Text component is part of Flame. Above the onload method, we're going to create a text component called instructions which is going to hold our instructions on the screen, also the status of when the uh, music is playing or not. We're going to create a basic style for the text component, which is part of Flame, so that we can set the font color or the text color to white. There are different techniques to set up Flame so that you could use the Flutter text widgets, but it's not covered in this tutorial. This tutorial covers the text component, which is part of Flame. Flame also has the text box component, as well as text paint. The text on the screen will be displayed as a simple string. And within the string, we're going to use the backslash n, which is a new line. So we'll have the menu or the instructions be on different lines. Instead of creating a different text components or using a text box component. Uh, we're just going to use this backslash n to make it simpler. In Dart, you can break out a single string into different lines. So when I have that single, single quote and a string, and then the next line after it has a single quote and a string, that's all just treated as one string by Dart. That's just a shortcut in Dart, so you don't have to put the plus sign at the end of every piece of string. Then for the text renderer, we're going to use that regular text paint that we specified a bit earlier. Text paint is from Flame, but the text style is from Flutter. So you can use the all the Flutter uh, text styles that you're familiar with. To get the instructions to appear on the screen, we're going to have to add it. Add is a keyword from Flame. You can add a flame component anywhere, so you don't have to have it in on load. I'm going to load the instructions right when the game itself loads. Okay, it's working. I'm going to now push it down. All right, so let's go back to the on load method where we were specifying the properties of the instructions. And the properties, uh, there's a Y property. So if 100 pixels, 100 pixels down from the top, and boom. It's looking good. I'm going to push it a little bit in from the left. So I'll specify a bit of um, spacing for the X property. Let's push it in 20 pixels from the left and see how it looks. It looks good. Currently, I'm setting the string in the onload method, which is fine. But I'm going to move it up into above the onload method uh, into just the class variables here so that I can use that class instance variable in other parts or in other methods. So we're going to change it when you tap it or double tap. In our simplified game here, the only time the music would change uh, the state of the music is if you tap on the screen or you double tap on the screen. In addition to the basic instructions, we're going to show what track of music is playing. Right now in the simplified example, we only have two tracks, but you could add more tracks to your game. Let's test it. Double tap will increment the track. Let's copy the string so that when we tap on the screen, and it either starts or stops the music, uh, we can see the status change. There's two conditions, whether the music is playing or not playing. We have this in a previous video to check it. And so if in either case, we're going to change the string slightly so that the instructions.text uh, will either say that Okay, if it's if it's you just stopped it from playing, then you're just going to show that the uh, playing status is stopped. So there's a short short sequence of commands here where 
you stop the flame audio, then you set the Boolean variable playing music to stop to false. And then we're going to change the string after that to show the status is now stopped. So let's copy it from playing and we'll just change that status portion of it so that the uh, status is now stopped. And let's test it. In order to get it working, we're going to have to add it also to the double tap uh, detector. So on double tap, when we change the track, we also want the information to appear there. So let's copy the string that we created earlier just for simplicity so we don't have to uh, create too many fancy variables. And if the music is playing, we're going to have the status be playing. So very similar to what we just did. Uh, let's just copy this exact uh, logic here and see whether it works. After we get it working, we're going to add the audio into our visual novel game that we're building. So be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can get an update on that and follow along with our journey. Just need to add a backslash n to control the new line of spacing with our string and we should be good to go. Full code is in the text description of the free course on Teachable, which is in the uh, description. Thanks and have a great day. There are many other videos in the 2022 Flame Tutorial Series, as well as 26 videos in the 2021 series. Subscribe to the channel for future updates. These videos are on Teachable as a free course. There is no upsell as this is purely a hobby for me. I'm using Teachable only for the progress so you can see how far you have progressed with the course. It also makes it easier for me to organize the videos and the sequence of information that I'm presenting. In whatever way you choose to learn, the most important thing is to keep on trying to learn and have fun while doing it. Have a great day.